you're trying to talk, you can unmute yourself. So if you can mute it now. Keep I, have everybody, I, I, I have everybody muted. I've turned off the unmute. So a few things before we're going to get going. If you're not familiar with Zoom. Um, sorry about that. If you're not familiar with Zoom, we'd like uh, you to kind of do it in an orderly fashion by using the reactions button. And under that reactions button is a virtual hand raise uh, or a wave of some sort to call attention to the screen so that we can so that we can call on you on, a, on an orderly fashion get your comments up on screen and recorded uh, so again please if you're on screen uh, and you are going to be speaking tonight uh, wait to be called at the appropriate time the chairman will call you will unmute you I will send you a request to set that will say unmute you hit that button, you'll be ready to talk, and then we'll call on your username. If you don't have your username as your name or something like that, just make sure you understand what your name is so that when it is time to call, we can call on you. Um, if you are calling in on a phone and you would like to speak, it is the star nine button. Okay, again, it's the star nine button. All right, Marty, that's all you. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to September 28, 2021, meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Marty Aikens. I'm the chairman. Hello. Vice Chairman Mr. Caveas is with us. Mr. O'Brien is with us. Mr. Chin is with us. And Mr. Himmel is with us. Uh, you'll be asked to take an oath before you speak. Uh, because it's just, it gets too confusing who did and who didn't and, and keep a record of that. So when it's your turn to speak, we'll ask you to take an oath that everything you say is the truth, not but the truth. Uh, Mr. Cabez, could I have a motion uh, to waive the reading of August 24th, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to waive the reading of the minutes of August 24th. Second. On the motion, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Under tonight's agenda, we have a big agenda tonight, but for old business, I have case number ZBA 2111, 10 seconds mass, 429 Hancock Street. Is the applicant a representative here? Party, they submitted a letter to continue. All right, I don't have it. Maybe Jay has it. Uh, do you have a date on that, Noreen? Yes, I do. Um, hold on one second, please. I got it right here. One sec. I got it right here. Okay. Uh, October 12th or the 26th? 26th. Why don't we do the okay. 26th? Only because they have to, they have to go to uh, planning and get some stuff up there. Make sure they have enough time. Why don't we do that, Mr. Cabeus, uh October 22nd, 26th. Mr. Chairman, matter number 21-11, 10 seconds mass LLC for a variance filing to construct an addition to an existing fire damage commercial space for restaurant use on the premises number 429 Hancock Street. I make a motion to continue the hearing to October 26th. Second. On the motion, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Move up. Six. All right. Further on the tonight's agenda, DBA 2156, Anthony Patrick Foley, uh, 17 Bennett Lane, wants a variance, use variance, special permit signing to demolish the existing industrial building, construct a 50 unit residential building, 17 Bennett Lane. Mr. Foley, are you here? He's under Caitlin Walsh. Should be, go ahead and unmute yourself. So you need to unmute yourself. Mr. Walsh, un unmute yourself. Patrick, can you unmute yourself? Unmute. Mr. Chair, can you hear me now? Yes, we yes. can. Now, I understand you're go you have to go back to planning and get and get a bunch of stuff. So tonight, why don't we talk about a use variance to get you started. Okay. Go to planning 
And then we come back with the stuff from planning. Then we can decide what we're going to do there. How's that? Um, I'm, I'm confused, Mr. Chair. There was no, no mention of planning the last time we were here. Well, that's that's what I understand. Hold on one minute. Mr. Chair is busy right now. So, all right, why don't you uh, – I thought you had to go to planning and talk about parking and other things. No, we, we were told to make some changes to our plans and come back in a month with our changes. To planning? No, to, to the, zoning, the zoning board. Did you, did you get your stuff from planning yet? No, we, we haven't even been to planning. That's what I'm saying. You have to go there to get, all your, to get it all because what I understand is there's things that have to be done up there that they're going to have to massage, correct? This is the first I've heard of that, Mr. Chair. All right. Wait one yeah. second, everybody. Hold up. Mr. Duke is on the phone. <coughs> Mr. Duke. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Foley saying he don't. He's going to plan him, but he didn't hear nothing about coming back here. Yeah. So basically. That's what this board is going to request. Right. So that I, that I want, I'm, I'm just going to give him a use variance. So he gets that out of the way. So if there's an appeal, let that do. And if not, he's got planning in a month. He can get that. And then we can come back and look at the conditions and see if we agree on everything. Planning will, will massage the parking and then we'll come back and right. wrap it up. With How's that, Mr. Foley? Did you hear Mr. Duca? I didn't. All right. Mr. Duca. Oh, maybe you got to speak in here. Something's going on here. Yeah. yeah. So, Patrick, the uh, zoning board is going to request that you ask for your use variance, which is the biggest hurdle. Okay. And you're going to go to planning, and then the planning board is going to request, the zoning board is going to request, is going to want to hear from the planning board uh, as far as site plan review and special permit and a recommendation from planning board. And then you can come back and, and the zoning board will then consider uh, the planning board's recommendations. But I think the biggest hurdle on these cases when, it, when it's in an industrial zone is that a use variance, you don't wanna be going through that whole process and have to deal with a use variance in a, in a uh, possible appeal. So you wanna get that out of the way. Everything else will kind of fall in place. But uh, generally speaking, the zoning board would like to hear from the planning board on um, everything else as far as site plan review and approval. And then they'll, you can come back and they'll give the rest of the variances that you need. Are you seeking other variances? Yeah. Yes. Cause yeah. we were, we were told when we were here a month ago, what the issues were with the project. We went back with our architect. We got a traffic engineer. We corrected the plans and we came back. This is the first we heard about going with the planning and, coming back to the zoning board again. Well, this is what we usually do when it comes down to an industrial zone. We want to see what they say. And, and it's not just cop blanks that whatever they say, we're going to uh, agree with without looking at it. I mean, the board has to make their decision on what they said. Maybe they want one more space. I don't know, but you know, they just want to look at it and make sure we all agree on, it, on this end. So tonight, look at the bill. They have to change it. They might want to listen to their new presentation. No, that's what I mean. So if you want to go through your presentation tonight, we'll go through it all. Okay. And then we can look at a use variance, and then we can look at the rest of it after you come back from planning. Just, just we got to hear the whole case anyway. Okay, Mr. Chair. Thanks. You ready? Yep. <laughs> You're up. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My name is Patrick Foley. I represent Bennett Lane Associates, LLC, and its principals, Tom Fitzgerald and Sean Whelan. I'm also joined here tonight by Ilda Alba from Chewin Associates us, and our civil engineers, Ahadi and Mann. Um, NKNA Landscapers doing our landscaping design. Since we last uh, came up here, uh, we added Jack Gillen as a traffic engineer for our project. Um, the proposal is located at 17 Bennett Lane, which is located in the industrial A zoning district of the city. The project will be 28,483 square feet. It stands five stories tall. There'll be 52 bedroom and two bathroom condo units. This will be replacing the current electrical company and manufacturing plant. 
The applicant will be keeping the footing of the building and the foundation. This proposal will significantly increase the tax revenue brought in at this uh, property. Um, one big change that we made um, from the last time we were here is that we went from 52 parking spots um, to 71. Um, these gentlemen um, have 41 units right now that are currently occupied in this area, um, Oak Grove Terrace and Bennett Lane. And of those 41 units, 44 of them have cars, um, just so we can kind of show how these units have been marketed. Um, now I'm just going to have Ilda go through um, some of the more of the change that we've made to the building um, in the last month. Okay. You give him the screen, Jonathan, so we can. He should be good to go. Okay. Patrick, you can you can do that now. just having our architect get these plans out. All right. They need to be unmuted. They just um, texted me. Okay, there you go. Again, people, if, you, if somebody needs to talk, especially if you're on a case, use that virtual hand raise button If you uh, in, in the reactions or use star nine. I can't follow along with everything. I just need to know right. where you are or throw your screen on and just give me a wave. Can you hear us now? They're under David Freed. Can you hear us? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good now. Okay. This proposed project consists of an addition to a single story building. The existing building footprint and structure will remain and there will be an addition over it also to the right side of the existing building. The proposed building will have five floors of residential units. Some are going to put some are going to put the building up so the rest of the people can see this. Okay. Hey. So this is the facade. Um, the building will have five floors of residential units and parking located in the basement. And there will be two units total. Can you, can, you, can you speak up a little bit because we're recording this and so it's kind of hard here in my end. There will be 50 units total, 10 units per floor, all two bedrooms and two bathrooms. There are 52 parking spaces and 19 tandem spaces that we are able to create, six in the basement and 13 at the outside parking area. The existing 11 parking spaces at the front of the building will remain. The right side surface parking spaces will not be visible from Independent Ave or Oak Grove, given the topography of the site. The grade slopes down towards the north side, so the surface parking will be below the street's elevation. The back of the property abuts the MBTA train tracks, and there is no other buildings with a direct view from the back. The units vary from 1,264 square feet to 1,637 square feet. Most of the units have balconies, and some of them have Juliet-style balconies to give the building a more residential look. We made some changes to the building exterior from the last meeting to incorporate more brick and reduce few windows to make the facade less busy. We also prepared a traffic report, and we have Jack here that uh, can answer any questions related to the traffic. Thank you. Pat, what's going on? Any questions for Jack? Any questions from the board? 
I have none. No. No questions here. Stanley? Mr. Chairman, could you could they show us a picture of the tandem parking? Uh, I I didn't see that, but I, it went by so fast. Can you show us the parking, please? Bring that back up. So this is the garage, the basement on this side. Right. We don't have it yet. Wait till you, share, you need to share the screen again. We took it off when there was questions. Okay. Okay. So these are the parking inside the garage. And yep. the parking that you see from here, labeled. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Okay. So these are the tandem parking in the garage. And then these are the tandem parking outside. Yeah. Is there 71 spaces you said? Total. 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 Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. 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 Okay. And how much space is there between the tandem parking space and the uh, across from to the separate single parking space? How many feet is that? 24 feet. 24 feet. Thank you. Any other questions? No. One question, Marty. Yeah. Uh, how are these How are these tandem spaces going to be assigned to the residents of the building? I would say they'd be two to a unit, correct? But yes. 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 Nineteen of the units will have two spaces, and the rest of the units will have one. Okay. So these are expected to be uh, condominiums, not rental apartments. Yes, condos. Yes, condominiums. So there will be assigned uh, parking to each unit that they'll have uh, two spots per unit. And how many spots do you have left over for guest parking? Two. Two. Uh, two. Two. Yes. Two. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just turned it down. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's freezing. <laughs> <laughs> I can turn it back. No, I'm good. No, no, I'm good. Really, it's not on. I just got it still on. Uh, still blowing from here. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to tell us? Um. Holy. Uh, Nothing, Mr. Chair. More question. Uh, guys, what, what what we should do now is look at a use variance, and then they're going to have to go to planning, and they're going to have to submit their plans there, and they'll massage them or whatever, and then we can take a look at it, see if we agree with everything. I know I heard a, a little gulp when we had two parking spaces for guests for 60 people. Uh, 71 spots, now you get two extra. And that's the only that's the only thing you can get out of that two extra spaces. Yes, sir. At this point, yes. You guess. Yes, at this point, that's. I mean, with all them apartments, where they, where do, where would they park if they came over? I mean, what what we have been finding is with the other buildings we own right there that are occupied, some of the, some of the unit owners don't even own cars. I mean, we we I mean, Jack has you know put together a report. And he's went through, you know, the occupied spaces because of the proximity to the MBTA. I mean, we, we seem to be getting, you know, uh, residents from that are working in Cambridge along the red line seaport, working in the city. I know, uh, you know, not everybody, of course, is going to work in the city. I remember that, you know, but we, we have units that, that don't even own cars. But, you know? And then when someone comes over, how are they going to know which unit? How, how do they know which one's available? I mean, There's not someone that's going to pull in and park there. They're all deeded, there will be deeded parking spots to each unit. They'll be numbered and deeded to the unit. 
So if the commode- I'm saying I, I have two spaces. I have a unit. And I have two spaces, and all of a sudden I, I have a couple of friends come over. Where do they park? They don't know where to park because they can't park in anything that's assigned because they could be having guests or someone else. So you're saying you have two spaces for the whole unit, for that whole facility, for guests to come over. Yes, and, this, and of course you got Oak Grove Terrace and Bennett Lane. Yeah, I know. Is that, a, is that a public street? Yes. Yeah. I'm just saying, it's like, you know, it, it, it's a big unit building. And if you get 10 people on the set and have guests, Yes, uh, 20 people, 40 people from over there. Where do they go? That's what I'm just thinking. All right. Anyway, any other questions? I know I'd like to take a real look at that and go down there, and I will, and see what's going down in that neighborhood in the next few months. Uh, see where people are parking on weekends. <clears throat> of course. Any Mr. other chairman, uh, questions from the board? I, I just, yeah, Mr. Chairman, if uh, the planning board is going to be looking at this, yeah, why don't we wait to see what they say about the parking? Uh, That's what we're going to do. We'll, yeah, well, let's uh, yep. let's just talk about the uh, use the use variance. Okay, uh, I'm in favor of that. Giving them a use variance that way they that that's the part that's out of the way, and then we can make sure later on we can talk about all the other stuff. All right. Sounds, sounds, we want sounds. an agreement. Yeah. Yeah. So, Chin, are we listening to any positions tonight on that? You streaming? I I didn't hear a word you said. It was all muffled. I don't know what happened. <laughs> you, I well, I couldn't hear. Are we entertaining any neighbor? We're going to hear. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you? You can hear me. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, let people we, speak. I'm just saying, are we in agreement for that for tonight? Oh, that's fine. Yes, I'm in yeah. agreement for, for okay. moving forward. Yes. All yes. Right. All right. So let's talk about the use variance. Is there anyone that wants to speak in favor for the use variance? Raise your hand. Uh, yeah. In, in the reactions, uh, the virtual hand raise. Star yeah, nine, if you're calling in. Or turn on your screen if you have a camera. Give us a wave. Uh, right now, not seeing any hands, Mr. Chairman. Se second call. One hand, Citizen Rotafeld. Citizen Rotafeld. John, you take an oath, please, Mr. Bass. Well, you swear to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I hope you got. I do. Thank you. Go ahead, John. Uh, John Rotafeld, 62 Graham Hall Road. I'm in favor of um, apartments being put up there. They, you know, they already put those ones up on Oak Grove. One question I have is, do they also own the Oak Grove, the Oak Grove project, or is that a different developer? I, I don't know. Yes. The answer is yes. Yes, they do. Okay. okay, because that way, you know, because people from visitors from mm -hmm. one apartment might park in the other place, but if you own both of them, then that really won't be a problem. So um, actually, that, that will be a good thing. Um, you know, I, I think it's a good thing because most of the traffic is going to be going to the right, going towards Braintree. So this really is really going to affect the people in Braintree more than the people in Quincy. And we're going to get the benefit of the tax dollars here in Quincy. Um, you know, I don't really like that tandem parking. We can talk about that at the planning. Um, but I'm definitely in favor of granting a use for building apartments up there. It's within wide <laughs> distance of the train station. And I think that's a, a great place for new growth in the city. So I'm in favor of this project. Thank you. Thank you, John. Anyone else? Last call. No more here. Call that part of the hearing closed. Any correspondence? No, we had some correspondence at the last. Okay. It was in the new change. Okay. Uh, is there anyone opposed or undecided? Anyone opposed or undecided? First call? Not seeing any hands. Second call? Third call? Call up by the hearing closed. Mr. Kvase, can we have a motion, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. In matter number 21-56, K 
Attorney Patrick Foley for a variance, use variance, special permit, finding the demolish existing industrial building and to construct a 50 unit residential building on the premises numbered 17 Bennett Lane. I make a motion to grant the use variance. Second. Only at this time. All right. Uh, Noreen, you. Yes. Could you take a roll call vote, please? Yes. Mike Oveas? Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. John Himmel? Yes. Marty Aiken? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Further round of... Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. DBA 2142. You... X U I don't I, I Yushin Yushin Shu sorry uh, my name uh, for a special here. permit floodplain variance finding to construct a one story addition in a roof deck on seventy Carlisle Street is the applicant representative here yeah and, and how do you pronounce that name I'm sorry Yushin 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 yeah Yushin you have the floor you uh, are you an attorney. Um, uh, I'm an owner of the building. Okay, could you take an oath, please, Mr. Bass? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I hope you God? Yes, I do. Thank you. You have the floor, sir. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairman and the board member. Uh, I'm, uh, my name is Yu Xing. Uh, uh, I'm the owner of the single family building at 70 Carlisle Street. Uh, we just moved to this build, this new home last year. So we all love this uh, our new home and uh, the new uh, neighborhood. Uh, my home has uh, three bedroom uh, with one and a half bathroom. The three bedroom are on the uh, second floor with um, uh, one full bus. The half bus is uh, in the basement. And uh, the three bedroom actually are pretty small and uh, they are next to each other. We feel pretty much inconvenient for the uh, current sitting uh, because our son is uh, living with us. Uh, he's an uh, adult now. And uh, especially when we have uh, uh, some guests, we uh, do feel crowdedness and uh, inconvenient. So for this case, uh, we just would like to apply uh, a permit for uh, addition with a one bedroom and uh, uh, we, uh, and a full bus on the uh, existing deck uh, in our in our backyard. Yep. So the addition uh, information for the addition uh, was uh, submitted uh, with our permit application. So. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you will have time to go through it. All right, you're adding a floor. You're gonna put a second floor in the house. Is that correct, full second floor? No. Um, it's on the deck, this first floor. The addition's going in the back? Yeah, in the backyard. And that's uh, coming up two floors, correct? No. Uh, Yes, uh, it's a first floor with a one bedroom. The it's second up. floor is a deck. Right. Oh, all right. Any questions? Uh, I have none. But the, there's a, is there a deck? There's a deck out there now, correct? Yes. 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 And, and so what you're going to do is you're going to replace that deck with the with uh, the bedroom. Yes. Exactly. And you're going to put a deck above the bedroom. On yes. The, Yes. Okay. Uh, no further questions. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Chin, any questions? So it sounds like the footprint is not changing, notwithstanding that part of that footprint is a deck. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Hamill? No questions. All right. Is there anyone that would like to speak in favor? First call? Second call? No hands, Mr. Chairman. Third call, close. I got a letter here from DPW, June 24, 2021, 70 Carlisle Street, case number ZBA 2142. Review, 
we reviewed the above reference project and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided? First call. Second call. No hands, Mr. Chairman. Third call. Call up how the hearing calls. We okay. have John Citizen Rotefeld at the last second. Citizen Rotefeld. Opposed or undecided? Go ahead. I got my hand up um, between the two and the three count. That was a slow okay. count, Marty. If you had counted quicker, I would have not spoken. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, but um, just from looking at the picture, um, he, the driveway is really tiny. You know, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned with, um, and it looks like those bushes are owned by the neighbor. It, it looks very challenging to park in the driveway and actually get out of the car if you're next to the building. So now yeah. if they're going to be building behind there, that's going to make it even more challenging. So it's, I don't know. I mean, it, it, there is, you could park on the street there, but it's a skinny street. So there will be, you know. It's just a weird driveway. I just John, that's a usable that driveway. We've been down there. The driveway works. Okay. Other yeah, than no. that, um, you know, that's fine. They pay a lot of property taxes. They deserve to make their house bigger. So um, um, I'm in favor of them doing it as long as the driveway is cool. Thank you. Last call. All up the hearing close. I'll be voting in favor. It's upgrading this house. It's going to look nice. I'm in favor also, Mr. Chairman. So, Brian? I agree. There's no nothing behind him that would uh, he be impacting or visually disturbing. So, I'm in favor. Mr. Chen? One question uh, regarding the brick patio. Will that be allowing the water to seep through into the ground, or is that going to be uh, impervious where your brick patio is going to be? Because it looks like most of this land is going to be covered by either the the bituminous driveway, the structure, the garage, the concrete in the front, the pad there, and then there's going to be brick in the back. Uh, it's not uh, room for the water to go through. So what is your plan for that brick patio? Uh, actually, uh, for the garage, we, will, we don't use it. Uh, we will demolish the garage because uh, it's not usable. Uh, we normally just park on the, on the street. But uh, once we demolish the uh, garage, we will have more space over there in the in our backyard. Do you plan to make that grass or, or bushes or anything with the garage? Uh, we, we just cover it with uh, uh, the stone. Uh, that's the plan. I see. Okay. I'm in, I'm in favor. Mr. Hamill? In favor. I have a motion, please. Mr. Chairman, Amendment number 21-42. Uh, UU for a special permit floodplain variance finding to construct a one-story addition on the roof deck and a roof and a roof deck on the premises number 70 Carlisle Street. I make a motion to grant the uh, special Second. permit floodplain and everything else. On the motion, Second. seeing none. Madam Clark, can we have a voice vote, please? Yes, Michael Veyes. Yes. Kelly O'Brien. Oh, yeah. Russell Chin. Yes. John Himmel? Yes. Marty Akins? Yes. Gentlemen, on the new business, ZBA 2155, Daniel Kuhn for variance from sports in the front setback of premise number 44, Shore Rab. Is the applicant or the representative here? Go ahead Marty and unmute uh, yourself. Dan, can you hear us? Can you unmute yourself? Dan? Yes, yeah. unmuted. We can hear you. Uh, could you. Could you take an oath, please, Mr. Bayes? Yes. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth about the, about the truth, so help you, God? Yes. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Why don't you tell the board what you want to do in the front yard with your uh, the patio there? I mean, the, uh, the deck. Okay. So we, we have an existing deck, which is okay. about. Um, six feet by 17. It's on yep. the right side of our, well, if you're looking at our house, it's on the left side of the left house. Side, right. What we'd like to do is we would like to put the deck all the way to the other end of the house. So covering the full front of the house, about an eight foot um, by 28 foot. I, I believe the 28 feet is the whole length of the house. And we'd like okay. to go out eight feet. 
And what are you going to do for uh, a set of stairs coming up now? You're coming out with those two, correct? Yes. So that's two steps. Yeah, it's going to be two steps. All right. So that's plus the eight. Right. Now, the, the problem is, is our property, the fence line goes in an angle right. Right. in the street. One side is like 38 feet. The other yeah. side is 22. And yeah, that's no. where the variance comes into the. Exactly. The, uh, the Everyone right down and looks at your property. They, yeah, they do know that. I, uh, and you got a beautiful house there right across from the beach. So that's going to look really pretty. Yes, we and, love it. <laughs> I have a great idea what you're doing down there. Uh, especially you got a small, it's so small out there right now. I know. All right, a little deck. Any questions, Mr. Cabez? I have none. Mr. O'Brien? Uh, no questions. Mr. Chin? No questions. And Mr. Hemmel? No questions. Uh, is there anyone want to speak in favor? First call? Second call? David McCarthy? You have one here. Uh, Ward one. David, you're up. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. No, uh, I think it's great that the clones are, uh, you know, expanding down there. Shore Ave is a beautiful, a beautiful street. Um, their house is set back. The, uh, the expansion of the deck um, will just be an added, uh, an added plus to that, to that house and to that neighborhood. So I know Dan and I play a little phone tag and um, I got a good look at it and I'm very familiar with Shore Ave and, uh, it fits in. Uh, it fits in nicely. So, uh, full support for uh, for the clones. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else want to speak in favor? Second call. Not Third seeing call. any other hand. Third call. Uh, call that part of here and close. I have a letter here for DPW, September second, forty four, Shore Road, case number ZBA twenty one fifty five. We have viewed the above reference project and have no comments. Is there anyone else opposed or undecided? First call, Mr. Duke. Second call. No Third hands. Call. Third call closed. Can I have a motion, please, Mr. Sure. Uh, and that matter, number, Mr. Chairman, man number 21 55, David Clune for a variance of construct a porch and a front setback of the premises number 45 Shore Avenue. I make a motion to grant the variance. Second. On the motion. Seeing none, uh, Madam Clerk, could we have a roll call vote, please? Yep. Mike Coveas? Yes. Kelly O'Brien? Yes, ma'am. Russell Chin? Yes. John Himmel? Yes. And Martin Aiken? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Further on to tonight's new business, DBA case number 2165, Irene Ty for use variance to convert the existing single family home that is currently under construction into a two family home. The property is on residence A and residence B on the premises 213 North Park Street in Quincy. The applicant or representative here. Yes, good evening, sir. Good evening. Now, first of all, uh, first of all, Ms. Caves, could you give her an oath, please? Oh, yes, uh, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you, Doug. Yes, please help me, God. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> we we had this before us before. And and we, we said no for a two family home. So why is why is it back? Is the reason. When we already had this case a couple of years ago and then they decided to build a big home down there, and now it's coming back again for a two family house when we already said no. Many years ago. What's sorry. up? Uh, many years ago we didn't go forward with uh with that at the board meeting. We just stopped when uh, there was a first meeting. Can, can you hear me? Well, yeah, but, yes, but okay. you did. To go because, closer? Because, we said, because we all, we took the vote and said no. And then you asked for, you asked to, to disregard it and just take a withdrawal without prejudice. Which means you're gonna, if you're ever gonna bring it back, you're gonna have a different, different case. Not the same cases that you had with us before when we already voted no and let you leave with without a vote on record. So yeah, that, that, why don't you explain what's going on? Because I, I don't get it. No. Yes, we we my uncle have decided to move in the west. So we were able to do a single family 
And mm -hmm. a year ago, he got diagnosed with cancer and he had passed away and will not be able to move in with us anymore. So right. another, another family member is going to move in, but they want their privacy yeah. and they want their utility to be separate. Yeah. And that's the reason why we're seeking for a use variance at this time. Yeah. Um, the house meet all the setback. Uh, from the front, we have, uh, should I should I go down the list a little bit? The you, front, you, the requirement you, it's, is- it's your, it's your presentation. Okay. You um, the front is required 25 and we have a setback of 30. Mm -hmm. the left side, we have a setback of 13 as the requirement. On the right side, the requirement is 13 and we have 21 feet of setback. In the back, the requirement is 20 and we have over 35 feet of setback. Uh, the house is, is on a 12,368 square feet, and we have over 3,800 green space of available. And the only th there's, there'll be no changes into in the structure of the house, um, no change in size. The only thing we ask is just a separate wall and separate utilities, so other family members can move in to help us out. Uh, we don't want this to happen. Things happen in life that we didn't expect it. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect that my uncle was not able to move in with us. Right. He raised me and I wanted to take care of him when he's old. And yeah. he was going to move in and we all live together in spine. Mm -hmm. But then when he got diagnosed with cancer, he went back to Vietnam and then he got stuck there. He couldn't even come back. We, mm -hmm. I didn't get to see him for the last time. Mm -hmm. And this house is kept for the family to use. Mm -hmm. My family have spent over 30 years you know, trying to raise money to build this house. As you know, the house took a long time to build because of the COVID shutdown, because of material not available, mm -hmm. because of the price increase. Mm -hmm. And we're not doing anything else to the house. We're only asking to separate the wall and separate utilities. But, so but, 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 but ma'am, you are. What you're asking us to do is put a two family house there. It's going to be there for the next 150 years. And personally, I can't, I can't agree with that because I didn't agree with it the first time. So, it will be staying with the family for the rest of the time. They're not it it all sounds time. good. I've heard millions of people tell us this. Two years later, something happens in a family and they have to sell the house because they need money. It has nothing to do about you or anything. It's just me personally. You voted no on that when Mr. Phelan brought it in front of us. Because it's it's residence A, it's in a resident A neighborhood right there. So homes that were built in that area and with two family for 25 years, you can't stop. They were already grandfather because they were there. But we can stop building new two family homes and residences where it's a nice resident A community. And that's why I think that should be. That's just my person. But anyway, let's go to uh, Mr. Can, Mr. Can, I, can I say a little bit more, sir? Yep, go ahead. Um, this, the, the, the house location of the house is in a street with 10 houses and six out of that 10 houses is wealthy family, you know, and also eight, and right, eight common building as well. But and that don't make it right that they're in, they're in a zone A, that they were two family homes. I live in Howes Neck and there's still two family houses down there that shouldn't be, but there is because they're a hundred years old and they've been there for 34 years. So they got grandfathers. But we changed the laws so we wouldn't be on top of each other and have cars everywhere and parking families all over all one little neighborhood. I, just, I have enough parking that's space. Why, that's why in residence A, even Mr. McCarthy is, is taking away uh, B and Bs. You don't want them in in uh, in, in the zonings because they don't want people in and out of the neighborhoods all the time. That where it's a residence A, it's a family neighborhood, not not for for rentals. So uh, this, this, let me speak to Mr. Cabez. Maybe they all got a different mindset that I do. Mr. Cabez. Uh, I don't have any questions. I am concerned that we already went over this once before, but okay. I have no question. Okay. Uh, Mr. O'Brien. Yeah, I, again, I, I feel similar. The old, the uh, older houses up there that are two families were there probably before it became residency. So right. I, I think that was our argument the last time in permitting new two families and they were only start a chain reaction on the rest of the hill. So I'm, I'm having a difficult time authorizing a two family to go in on that lot. Mr. Chin? I have no questions. All right. 
you have any comments? No? Okay, Mr. Uh, where is he? Who's Mr. Hamill? Hamill. Oh, here he is, Mr. Hamill? Yeah, um, the fact that you that was voted previously and withdrawn for the same request, and then they come back after they've already done it. Um, I don't know if you've seen the site. The site's a mess. The I, I'm kind of mm -hmm. concerned with it with the back hill that was dug out with all the rain we've had. Um, I'm not happy with it. All right. Uh I think you've heard the board. If you want us to continue and listen to the rest of the neighbors and all the people in the neighborhood, we could do that and go through that. Is uh, there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? We do have two people with their hands up. Mr. Chair, I'm not sure if they're in favor or not. Uh, I believe person calling in with the username Tom. Tom? Hey, can you? Can everybody hear me? Yeah, Tom, are you a lawyer? You an attorney? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm just a neighbor. Um, okay. I've been in. Uh, uh, Tom, hold Tom, on. Tom. Hold on, Tom. Tom, hold on. You yeah. got to take an oath. Mr. Cavaeus, please. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I've i been living in Kunzi for 40 years. Uh, my son goes to Kunzi High, I mean, North Kunzi High. Uh, my parents been a, my parents owns a couple properties in North Kunzi. Um, they live right down the street. Uh, I have, I have no concern when people build houses and when they get the permit and, and uh, you know, and they can do it because the city approved it and, 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 uh, and I'm all for it. But, uh, I, but Irene, uh, uh, I mean, Irene here, she, she have another single family on, uh, and uh, she committed to a three, three family. That's a different property on the, on the, on the same street, uh, where Egan on, 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 on this. So it's a single family. She converted to a three family. You can tell by the meters on the outside. That's, that's a different issue. So before that, she came along, she, she bought the house, and she, she, she split uh, every room, and she rented out. I have no proof of that, but the garbage is everywhere. There's, there's, there's kids everywhere, and they're loud, and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, it's, well, it's, well, it's not fun for us. And also, on a new uh, property that she's building, right? She, yeah. she, I mean, I'm sorry that your uncle passed away. You know, that, that, see, that's a life cycle. But, so, but the thing is, uh, it, well, the thing is, you are in this for the money. You, you, you're not in it for the neighborhood. I mean, you apply for a single family, then you want to turn around and do a two, a two family. I mean, yes, I, yes, I, I am not stopping you from making a profit, but I have a kids here and my kids are still very young and my neighbor's kids are still very young. And this is a good neighborhood. And the, 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 what, the, the house across from you, it's 5,000 square feet. It's a single house. It's not a two family house. You know that? So, I mean, I don't mind you building stuff, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, having contractors what, coming over like, you know, seven o'clock in the morning on a Sunday night, you know, when people are trying to get some sleep and, you know, and, 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 and stuff. But it's very frustrating as a neighbor. I mean, I pay a lot of money for, for taxes. I, I pay $9,200 for a freaking tax, probably, probably tax. So I don't know about you. I pay a lot of money and I stay up all night and your neighbor comes up. They park the freaking car out the front and it's a public street. I understand that. You can park there, but to rub the engine freaking so loud that I can wake up. I have to make a living too. You know that? I mean, I don't mind you making, no, I don't mind you building it. If the city approve it, all but right, you got to right, consider all right, me. All right, let's, let's get back to, let's get back to the house. It's, let's uh, not, it's, it's not true. I, I, I oppose, said, you know? I, I, I oppose, I, 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 I oppose until the day I die. You disapprove or approve? No, he opposes. He opposes. He opposes. That's what I thought he said. Okay. And he, it's, it's not true what he said, and he has to have evidence of it. You know, if this is not a three family where I live. There's no, no, me out no, there no, because no. it's a common that. area. He's not saying that. He's not saying that. That's all right. Anyone else want to speak? We have Patricia, Patricia with her hand up. Again, Patricia, I, don't know if, I don't know if these are in favor or against. I, I don't either. We're going to have to, if, if, are you in favor, Patricia? Patricia, un are you in favor? Um, no, I'm not in favor, but I'd like okay, to. Hold on, hold on. Let me get the people that are in favor first. Is there anyone here in favor of this project? We had anyone? a couple more hands pop up. We have, uh, okay. we'll go to Edward. Edward's iPad. Edward? Edward, your iPad, what's your name? Hi, it's Ed Mead. Uh, Are you in favor, Ed? 
No, I, I raised my hand. I'm not in favor. Okay, okay. We'll get back to you. I just got to see who's in favor. If anyone's in favor, raise your hand, please, or wave to us, do something. We also have uh, Brian Nguyen. Nguyen, excuse me about the names. If uh, I'm not sure if he's in favor or not as well. I'll just unmute him real fast. Brian, are you in favor? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. Could you uh, please take an oath uh, by uh, Mr. Cabellas? Brian, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. So, um, yeah, my name is Brian. I do live in uh, on North Fork Street as well. And, Address, uh, please. 228. 228 Last North name? Fork Street. Luan. Last name? Luan. Luan. N-G-U-Y-E-N. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So I do... I do live on the street and um, I do notice there is multiple uh, housing around there. And I do understand the fact that you cannot um, build a zone B on a zone A or vice versa. Yep. But I still think that, you know, with her case, I think it's I think it's very reasonable where uh, she's not hurting anyone. She's not doing anything wrong. I don't I don't see the, the wrong in it. Um, I mean, that's not for me to say. Obviously, it's up to you guys, but that's just on my opinion at the end of the day. Um, but I just wanted to give my full full support and my favor into into the, the whole situation. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else speak in favor? Raise your hand. Citizen Rodefeld. Citizen Rodefeld, are you in favor? Yeah, I, get, I am in favor. Okay. Uh, John Rotafail, 62 Grandwall Road. Um, from looking at the picture, there is a tiny sliver of their property that actually is in residential B. It's not very big, but it, it you know, their property. So there have been cases in the past where there's been a property in residential A and residential B, or it's been in business C and residential A, and you have allowed them to build and everything on Bale Street is actually residential B. So they're right next to residential B. So it's not like they're in the middle of a residential A neighborhood. I just wanted to point that out. And having 13,000 square feet and only asking to build two units, you know, I would say maybe put a deed restriction on it saying that they can't come back and build more than two units would maybe be something prudent you could do. But for them to ask to build two units on a 13,000 square foot lot that abuts a business B property, I don't think that's a big ask. Um, everyone who lives in the city, business A, residential A, zoning changes so frequently. So if you live somewhere on a border, that's where the development is happening all throughout the city. And, you know, just to single out the, the, you know, the applicant and saying they're just doing it for profit, pretty much everyone who comes up here and asks for a variance is doing it for profit. So, so John, do you understand what we, what we were talking about? We're talking about, we already voted on this and it came back as the same project. When we gave it, we let it, let it go without prejudice. Which means well, we I, well, I, I, you have to change your project to come back. Well, the reality is, though, I mean, I, I, I'll I, have to go back and look at that video from, from that one, um, although okay. I really don't think I'll, I'll waste my time. But the bottom line is that if, I hear they had gone I hear and, if you had taken a vote on it and if it had gone vote no, then they would have. But if they withdrew it without prejudice and it was more than two years ago, um, she has the right to at least come up and ask, and as the yeah. zoning board, you have the right to say yes. That's why we're right. hearing it, John. That's why we're so, hearing it, John. Right, right. So, but I mean, I'm just saying, I'm from from everything that I've seen, the the hundreds, mm -hmm. maybe even thousands of cases that I've seen. I don't think this is a ba a big ask, and um, I, I would be in support of it. Thank you. Thank you, John. Is there anyone else want to speak in favor? Third call. No further hands for in favor. Before I close, I have a letter here. It says, we the neighbors of the Thai family at 213 North Fork Street, Quincy 02170, understand the hardship the family is going through and are in support of the family converting their single family to a multifamily. Please allow this conversion. Thank you. 
303 Beale Street, McMillan, uh, Chan Yang, Ying, 220 Norfolk Street. I don't know this lot. It's uh, Numeveros, 308 Beale Street. Burton, Burton, or written, 223 Norfolk Street, uh, Nebraska, 320 Beale Street, Vin, 228 Norfolk, and Ty, 304 Beale Street. Isn't that the owner? Yes, that's for me. Yeah, that's the owner. Do, do you want me to share the screen? I can show you the letter. No. No, no, I'm all set. Uh, further, further, we'll call that part of the hearing closed. I have a letter here from the DPW, September 2nd, 213 Norfolk Street, case number ZBA 2165. We reviewed the buff reference project and have no comments. Anyone opposed or undecided? If you're opposed or undecided, let's go back to Patricia. Mr. Chairman, yeah, Pat Patricia, then Tom, and then uh, actually Patricia, then back to Edward, and then back to Tom afterward. Very good. Thank you. Yes, Patricia, uh, can you hear me? First, first and last name and address, please. Patricia. Patricia, Perez, Patricia Perez, 210 Norfolk Street. Okay, you have the floor, Patricia. Yes, thank you. I want to say uh, first that uh, I wonder about Mr. Brian Nguyen from 228 Norfolk Street, if he's the owner of the house. And if not, then how long he has lived here in Norfolk, in Norfolk Street. Also, uh, in regard to Mr. Citizen Rod Rodolfield, I don't know how to say his name. Rodolfield. Yeah. He does not live also um, on, in Norfolk Street, so I don't even know what he's talking about. Our street, the street he does not sleep in every day. Uh, in regards to the neighbors of 210 Norfolk Street, they are new neighbors and they have lived here for a couple of years only. In regards to Tom and I, uh, he Tom was the first person who talked. He said he lived here for 40 years. We've been here for more than a decade. And most of the neighbors during the pandemic actually uh, moved from Norfolk Street. So before the pandemic, the entire neighborhood, everyone who lived here, most of us have been lived here for more than a decade, came to the zoning board to say we did not want Irene tied to build this big house in our street because we knew from the very beginning she wanted to build an immense house to divide it and sell it to as many people as possible. At the time, she lied and said that this house was for her parents who are elders and need care. But after seeing her plans, nobody believed the story about her parents. So because it was obvious that this big house uh, with many doors, entrance, do entrances, these um, it's not a place for your parents necessarily. Uh, it's important to know that the neighbors do not also believe her, especially the neighbors that lived here for decades, because we, we know her for a long time. And what Tom said is, uh, is actually true. She did rent it for years to uh, her house, which is right in front of us, to as many people as she could. Again, we don't have, and uh, we don't, uh, we, I can only say that. Uh, <coughs> We saw many people leave. We saw um, families, uh, small families living there and with other uh, college students making a lot of noise. She also rarely takes care of her lawn, uh, lawn and she has not really had any lasting relationship with the neighbors. She, you, you will see that most of the people that support her are neighbors that have been here for very little time. So uh, she lied to authorities the first time we were there at the boning, uh, zoning board. I think she's lying for the second time. She actually took advantage of the pandemic to build the house that she was not allowed to build by law. Uh, this year in quarantine has been a nightmare for everybody and for us too, the neighbors who have had to stand construction noise at 7 a.m. every Saturday and Sunday, because mm -hmm. for some reason, uh, she is only constructing Saturday and Sundays until seven, uh, starting at seven a.m. So this is an, and this is apart from an incredible amount of dust and trash for the entire COVID pandemic. The time that we had to be in our homes, uh, quarantine, uh, it was really the the worst time to make 
uh, a construction, the worst time to have trash all over your house, house and dust. We cannot take it anymore. It has affected our health and I'm spending twice as much uh, money cleaning the inside of my home because of the dust. So we, we've, been do, we've been looking at this uh, for a year and a half, uh, pass in front of our eyes. So um, Irene uh, wants to build and always wanted to build a two or even a three family home, I believe. Uh, in Norfolk Street, the uh, residents never um, supported it. The people that are supporting right now, they're all re new residents that just moved in. Okay. We got it. Thank you so much, Patricia. Uh, Tom? Edward. Uh, uh, Edward? Edward, did you take an oath yet? No. No. All right. It was the sweat of the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. Thank you. You're up. Uh, my name is Ed Mead. I live at uh, 224 Pine Street. Uh, the back of my property abuts um, this property here. And I heard one of the um, chair chairman mention the degrading of the hill. And I'm very concerned about the degrading of my, my back property uh, because they, through this construction phase, they just come in and like rip the ground apart. So I'm concerned about that as well. Uh, additionally, this was uh, brought be before the uh, distinguished board once already, and it was voted against. And I think we should remain that way. And that's that's about all I have. Thank you very much for your time. Is there anyone else? And we Tom? have Tom on the phone. One more. Tom, take an oath, please, Tom. Yes. He he did already. Oh, he did. Yeah, I swear to, okay. I swear to tell the truth. Yeah, I don't want to waste anybody's time because uh, this is very inconvenient for me uh, as well. Uh, I mean, I love this neighborhood. I mean, my, my, my mom and dad lived uh, down the street five minutes away. They're like in their 70s. So I'm the youngest son. I want to be able to take care of them. But right, I'm Tom, so frustrated. Tom, what's your address? Uh, 222, what, North, what, Norfolk Street. 222. Kunzi Mass. Yeah, Kunzi Mass, 02170. Yeah. Yeah, I want to I stay here and take care of my family. Uh, but the thing is, I don't feel, uh, I feel like this neighborhood is turning upside down. And I, I just don't feel... Uh, I mean, I just don't feel com what, what comfortable and safe. I don't know her. She's a stranger. She just bought the land. She built a house. Uh, Mr. Brian, New what? Mr. Brian Newton is not an owner of anything. He lives on, uh, he, well, he lives on 223, uh, 222, uh, uh, what? Norfolk Street. The uh, house above me. He's not an owner of anything. He, he, I mean, he just lived there with, with, uh, with his girlfriend that, uh, the dad owns the house. So he, he doesn't own any houses. He doesn't pay any property taxes. Right. So okay. I don't know. So, so the point is, I mean, the point is, it's like she's in there for the greed. If you, well, if you look at another house that, what, that she owns, it's a single house, but she converted into a three family. You can come down the street and look at it. It's a three, three meter. That's all I got to say. And this, this, I mean, this house, if you let it, if you let her do it, I mean, if you let her uh, convert it to, to a family, I will sell my house and I, and I, and I will leave Kun Kunzi. All right, Tom. I'm, I kind of, we, we get it. We get you really do. Thanks. Anyone else? Can no I, further hands. Wait, wait a minute, uh, I mean, I'll let, you, I'll, let, I'll let you speak. Is that it? Second call? Anyone else? Third call? No hands. Irene, go ahead. Yes, I just want to clarify that the neighbors uh, was not, is not true what they said. Mm -hmm. Because of the pandemic, I only work one day a week, and we don't do it on Sunday. And Saturday, if we do, we usually start around 9.30 on 10 o'clock. I buy coffee for the contractor when they come. And okay. we, I only do one day a week because they're not available to come and work. That's why the project dragged it so long. And Tom keeps saying that, oh, it's, uh, uh, I have people living here. It's not true. I'm here living in this house by myself, mm -hmm. you know. At this time, and this is a big house. It's supposed to have more people in and out. I have a six bedroom there. And this is not a three family either. If you know anything about construction, the meter is a common area, okay? And also this house that I'm building, uh, Patricia have no right to say that I'm lying and my parents is not moving in. My parent is moving in because they're elderly and I want to take care of them. My parents and my uncle was both moving next door to me mm -hmm. so I could take care of them. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not building this for profit. Okay, yeah. if I want to build this block five, we will not save 30 years. I would just sell that piece of land and have someone else build it. So it won't be all this trouble. And okay. I'm also, and the house is already 
constructed. I'm just asking to build a wall and separate utilities. I'm not adding bigger to the house. I'm not adding more. And like, like um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Like John, I guess, the citizen. Um, I'm sorry if I got your name wrong. Oh, that's John I mean, Motorfield. Yeah, yeah John, Mr. John Motorfield. I mean, I'm not doing, he, he's, uh, I don't know how to say it. I'm just really nervous right now. I'm not doing anything else with the house. Like, uh, I, I, I think it was he that said it. I could put it in deed. And not to do anything the house, keep it two families for a century for whenever it is. And we are not planning to sell it. I, I lived in Quincy all my life. I went to elementary school here. I went to middle school here. I went to North Quincy High School here. I'm here hey. to stay and we want to hey. stay as well. You hey. know, we, I just want to have a place for my parents to live and call it home. And that's it. And, and it's not true that we're doing construction, making noise. We're not making noise. Anybody I, I got one that, question you know? for you. If you live yes. alone with six bedrooms, how come they're not living with you there? I can, excuse me, can you repeat that, please? You just told me you live alone in six bedrooms. Why don't they live with you there? Because my husband and my family live here. Oh, you said you and, live there alone, is what you said to me. Because so I've been, I, I'm in the middle of a divorce. No, you just said to me that you live there alone. So yes, I'm alone right now yourself. because my husband is that's gone. I, was just, I just asked a question. That's all, man. Yeah. All right. And so that's why my parents is moving next door. And like I said, the house is done. We're not adding more square footage. We're not making it bigger. We just want a separate wall and a separate utility investment. I understand. Utility I understand. You want to yes. make it a two-family home. Exactly. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Right, Chairman, we'll we do have... Of hearing. Huh? We'll there is one person who doesn't have their hand up, a uh, virtual hand raised, but they are waving on screen, Sheila Murphy. Sheila, go ahead. You're going to take an oath, please. Last call. Hello. Sheila, Hello, hold Sheila. on. You're going to take an oath. Yes. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I'll help you, God. Yes. Thank you. Hello, my name Sheila, is... Sheila, name and address for the record, please. Hello, my name is Sheila Murphy. I live on 43 Hillside Ave. Um, I am... A right around the corner from the house. I'm a yeah. listening tonight and makes me more concerned that I've driven by. You can clearly see there's, I believe, four doors on the house. It looks like it actually could be a four unit house. And I'm in, I, I wasn't going to say anything until I heard that someone noticed that there were three separate utilities. One, the other thing that I really don't like is the fact that she said she had six bedrooms and her family can't move in there. If they're elderly, why wouldn't you move them into the house that she can take care of? I'm a nurse. If you have elderly parent, family that you want to take care of, you move them in with you. So I'm more concerned now. I actually came to, to try to listen with an open mind, but I am more concerned. The third thing I'm very concerned about is where are all these cars going to be parked? Because there's, there's houses up on Hillside. I'm fortunate. We have a driveway. I, I am disabled. There are times I have to use a cane and I have trouble parking in my driveway. There are days I have to park on the street because I can't get out of my car by myself. But it's not me. We have neighbors without driveways. Where are all, the, all these cars going to park? Because it doesn't look like a two-bedroom house. Drive by it. There are four doors, four entrances, mm -hmm. and three electrical appliances, apparently, according to what someone said. So again, I came to this meeting with an open mind. I want to be a nice neighbor. I want to welcome people. I want to know my neighbors. I love the neighbors around here. And I'm very concerned. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you very much. That's it. We'll call that part of the hearing closed. Uh, I'm still going to say uh, I view it as we went through this once before. The neighbors spoke. They didn't want a two-family house there. We agreed to withdraw it, let her build a one-family, a nice home. And if she wanted to sell it, whatever she wanted to do with it, it was a home. And that's what we agreed on. And I'm going to stay with that. I don't want to turn this into a two-family home. Any comments, Mr. Cabeas? Uh I'll be voting uh, on the post to this. Mr. O'Brien? Um, again, I, I don't see us um, permitting this and then letting more of them on the Hill go that way. I'll be, I'll be voting no. Mr. Chen? Where it's a residence, a zoning, I'm, I'm, I'm opposed to uh, adding a multifamily in that zoning. So I'm opposed. Yeah, they, got, they got like 200 and something square feet of it as zone B on the corner of the lot. And Mr. Himmel. Well, since we don't have blended zoning, I know Mr. Rotofile says because it's close, we should consider it B. I don't think we should. It's Res A, B, 
it was denied previously, and I'll vote for the not deny it again. Can I have a motion, please, Mr. Cafeus, to deny the, deny the request? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Amendment of t- number 21-65, Irene Tai for a use variance to convert the existing single-family home that is currently under construction into a two-family home, the property is zoned residence A and residence B, on the premises number 213 Norfolk Street, I make a motion to deny, to deny the variance. Second. Uh, on the motion, seeing none. Madam Clerk, could we have a voice vote, please? Roll call. Yeah, Madam Clerk had to step away for oh, okay. health reasons, Mr. Chairman. All right, Mr. Duke is here. Michael Coveas? Uh, yes. John Himmel? Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Yes. Are you sure, Mike? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Russell, Russell Chin? Yes, to deny the application. Yes, okay. the denial. That's correct, uh, Mr. Chin. And uh, Marty Akins? Yes. Motion to deny passes. All right. Motion to deny passes. All right, Irene. All right. Further on to tonight's agenda. CBA 2157, Hanley for a finding to convert the existing real estate office into a nail salon on premises 134-138 Washington. She's the applicant representative here. It could be the applicant could be on a phone. Mr. Chairman, is that 857-313? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Is are you the applicant for yeah. the nail? Um, yes, sir. Um, are, are you an attorney? Um, no, I'm just a contractor, and also okay. the. Um, All yeah. right, hold on, hold on. Take a note from Mr. Cabayas, please. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth shall help you, Dad. Yes, sir. Thank All right, you. you. You have the floor. Explain what you want to do. Huh? Um, we um, we are ter- trying to um, build a um, nail salon um, on an existing um, real estate office, and um, it's uh, yeah, Henry. Yes, yes, and uh, how many people? Come on, can you can you can you tell us what you're gonna do here? Um, yeah, we are uh, we trying to build a um a nail salon with um eight pedicure chair and um eight many? manicure station. How many stations? Eight. 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 Yeah. Okay. Eight stations. How many people gonna be working there? Um. About eight eight employees, I would say eight employees. All right. Go ahead. What's the hours of operation? Uh, from um Monday to uh, Friday from uh nine to seven. Seventeen. And Saturday from yes, and Saturday from um nine to six, and Sunday from ten to four. And before Sunday, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead. You continue. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, that's basically it. We we just uh, wanna be on this line there. Um it's just it's just a nice neighborhood and then we just wanna have a nail nail salon there. Okay. No, yeah, how many how many parking spaces are up there? I mean, you know, I know there isn't many anyway. And look at that, and I'll grab the other paper. Uh, Mike, do you have any questions? Well, I have. I have a question that when I look at this design, yeah. I see sixteen something, and I was assuming that those were spa- uh, stations. There on there's eight on one side of the building, and there's eight on the other side. And having never really gone to a nail salon, I'm not really sure what that means. <laughs> it's sure. I don't either. So. I guess I'm asking the applicant, you know, yeah. what I'm uh, looking at this plan. Uh, what am I looking at? 
So, um, on the left, yeah, on the left is there's a pedicure chair. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah, that's a station, and uh, on the right hand side there's um another um a uh, manicure station. So a a a pedicure station and a manicure station is on this side. So you could be serving sixteen customers at one time. Well, it's nine on one um, side, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, okay. I'm sorry. I stand corrected. No, so I'm just saying it's nine there. And then, and then you know, in the waiting area, there's only three people, right? And don't forget the waxing room. Yeah, two waxing rooms. Waxing rooms. Up our right. Yeah, right. Yes, sir. It just seems like an awful, we're taking a use that was basically a real estate broker who, you know, doesn't spend a lot of time in the office. Uh, and instead, we're having uh, something that looks rather large to me. So um, that, that's all my, my question, I guess. But um, thank you. Mr. Duke, did you know about those nail salons? I don't. I don't. Generally, um, they can be done by appointment, but they're also mostly walking. And uh, parking is probably the biggest issue that's going to be addressed. I don't think supply it. They haven't supplied it. No, I haven't seen any parking. You have, you don't have, have any parking for that property at all, do you? Uh, we um the um, the um the landlord gonna provide us three parking in the in the back, and um that's why I'm lowly, and then um other clients can come and they use the on street parking. Because you get well, if you get eight people working here at a time, where are they gonna park? Um, we usually, this is how uh, we do uh, with the nail salon business. We usually pick up employees and they don't drive. Oh. Yeah. Because usually people work, is people uh, um, live in um, oh, people in here around the area. Should be allotted. Right. Now, do you, how, do you, how many spaces do you say you have? Three and back? Um, yes. And, and 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 where where are they going to park here? I'm just looking like where can they park? Uh, for the client, they can park right in front of the of the nail salon or across the street. Where the usually park in there. Yeah. I didn't know there was any parking on the street out front of that. Is it? Yeah, there's three. Huh? There's about three. But then you, the you got a right hand lane turn there too. They come down, I know. Yeah. All right. So you got three parking spaces out front, and then you got three in back? Yes, sir. And, 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 I mean, is there a parking lot somewhere else they could park? What's, what's that lot in the back? Um, you allow three of those? That's they give you three right there in the end? Yeah, they, they give me three uh, state just for employee, but uh, we don't, uh, our employee won't be driving to work. We're going to be uh, picking them all up. And then uh, with the client, I can, um, the landlord, um, I, we have the permission from the landlord. They can park um, their car um, behind the building also. Okay. Are there any tenants in that building? Yeah, how many tenants are in that building? Uh, right now, I, I believe it's three. Um, the, um, the massage, um, the massage, uh, therapy, and, um, the restaurant, and now it's the nail salon. Is it there a dance school in the backyard there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, all right, one one minute, guys. Do you want do you want him to come back, come in and see you, or are you just going to be able to work this out with him? No, I think, I think come in here first. For the board certification. Yeah, I'd rather so feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk to you. and I can do that. All right, all right. Uh, so here's what Mr. Duca says after after uh, this meeting. We'll let the people speak too, but uh, he'll go over the parking with them and the other clients that are in that. Uh, tenant space there. 
and see what we can do for parking. And then we'll have to come back to another meeting and, and see what we have for parking down there that's designated, what's right, what's not right, how many people are parking there. So let's just kind of go through this. But the parking is a problem right now, that's for sure, uh, for that many people in stations. Mr. Cabayas, any questions before we go no, into public? No, I think we should go into public. I'm, I'm all set. Mr. O'Brien? Yeah, the same. Um, the parking issue is going to be the big one in that whole area there. So. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, I believe the parking is an issue. It's only 30 minute parking out front for those three cars as well. So it's not a long parking. Uh, and Mr. Himmel? Yeah, I think the parking is problematic, but uh, let's go have them see Jay, see what they can work out. All right. Does there anyone want to speak in favor? First, second. Citizen Rotafeld. Citizen Rotafeld. You're up, John. How you doing again? John Rotafeld, 62 Brown Wall Road. I'm a little confused on, on how things work in the city um, sometimes, even though I, again, I watch a lot of these meetings. This, this is a commercial building, so the owner pays commercial taxes. Doesn't, in a commercial space, like anyone have the right to do business? So anytime there's a change of use, so if it goes from being a real estate office to mm -hmm. saying um, selling pizzas or I'm just confused on, we, on. Try to, we try to make sure that there ain't parking all over the street when people are driving down the street, John. If you get a place. Isn't there a giant parking lot that we just built? Like right across John, the street? John, I'm answering your question. Okay. Your question. All right, Mr. Okay. Duca, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Duca wants to answer to your question. John, thank you. That That's a very good question. All, all I'm going to try to do is, on behalf of the applicant, give the board the answers they need to make a decision. We're trying to figure out how the tenants use that parking on site. Uh, and it may very well be that the answer is the parking lot across the street, but the, the applicant has provided no information as to the tenant spaces that are there now and how many spaces it's limited to the amount of spaces. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna meet with the applicant, uh, get that information uh, and we'll continue it for two weeks if the board uh, desires to do that so that I can get the information to the board so they can make an educated decision. Uh, I'm just saying as, as we, we, you know, I, we have to encourage people that want to do business in Quincy to come to Quincy. Um, um, at the license board meeting um, two weeks ago, we allowed someone to go right downstairs in the, the new Cliveden building, 56 um, seats in that restaurant, and yep. they didn't have any parking. And no one even raised an issue about anything. So well, there's no I, I, parking I think, any, anywhere in Quincy right just now. Just to clarify, no one's denying this. Right. I, we, the board, in fairness to the board, they can't just approve it willy-nilly. Well, I'm not even saying denying it. I don't even understand why they even have to be here. Like, I, I would figure they should just go to the license board, and it should be up to the license board. I'm not sure why if oh. someone pays property taxes for commercial um, property in Quincy and the commercial property tax rates are extremely high in Quincy, then right. they have the right to, to rent it out to someone that wants to do a business. I I mean, well, why, don't, why don't we just kind of put it off for, for yeah. two weeks, John, until John, we just on. get there. Yeah. All right, John, that's a, that's a whole nother discussion. You know, what I'm saying is what a guy had a real estate business. He has two people in there, one person at a time, maybe two. Now you're going to have 16 stations. You know, you got, you got to look at this. You really got to look at what's going in there. Maybe there's another building firm or maybe this is the right building, but we got to know how many parking spaces are available. He says three. Uh, you know, let's figure out if it's three or if there's 13 and 20 across the street. We don't know, and he don't have that answer. And I, we have to know to make a decision here. Now, are you in favor or not, John? I, I, I'm in favor. I mean, I'm in okay. favor of right. allowing I hear you. I hear you, but I'm not going to discuss how the whole city works over this tonight. We got a we got a job here, and we got people waiting, and there's lawyers being paid, so they they want to move on, John. Well, the lawyers are being paid by the hour, and I'm helping them. John, get John, 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 just huh. put, just just give it a rest. Jesus <laughs> Christ! All right, is there anyone else in favor? Second call. Third no other call. hands up. 
All that part of the hearing close. Anything from the DPW when it's over? Probably not. Oh, there is. All right. oh. I got a letter here, September 10th, 134, 138, Wash Street, case number ZBA 2157. Review the above reference file. Have no comments. Anyone opposed or undecided? First call. Second call. Not seeing any hands. Third call closed. Why don't we put this off for two weeks? We'll find out what's going on, and we can even take a better look at it. I thought they had designated parking down there for those businesses, and, and Mr. Duke will make sure he'll do his homework for us. Have a motion, please, Mr. Chris. I'm going to continue for a date certain, uh, October 12th. October 12th. Chairman, in matter number 21-57, Finally, for a finding to convert the existing real estate office into a nail salon on the premises number 134, 138 Washington Street, I make a motion to continue the hearing till October 12th. Second. On the motion, say in favor. Aye. Aye. Thanks so much, Aye. sir. Opposed? So moved. Further on to tonight's agenda. Attorney Patrick Foley for variance to demolish the existing single family home and build a new two family townhouse style on premise 49 Shea Street, ZBA case number 2171. Mr. Foley. Good evening again, Mr. Chair. Um, Speak up a little. Yeah, good evening again, Mr. Chair. There you um, go. I want to start off and just say that um, I understand there's a lot of concerns with this project with the neighbors. I met with one of Butter yep. um, myself. I've had numerous conversations and meetings with Councilor and Veronica Gull, um, who's actually done a really good job of uh, expressing all the neighbors' concerns to me about this project. I understand there's a lot of letters about this project. So what I am requesting to do tonight is if we can just present um, what we're looking to do. Here's some feedback. I understand there are a lot of neighbors on here tonight and come okay. back in a month um, with some corrections. Sounds great. You Ready? have the floor. Yep. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My name is Patrick Foley, and I represent David Rose and Jordan Flegel, who are the applicants of this project. Both men are from the Boston area originally and bought this property a little over a year ago with the hopes of improving it and moving back here to live. They would have started immediately upon buying it, um, but everything COVID-related kind of delayed them about a year um, to be where we are here tonight. The proposal we're here to discuss tonight is located at 49 Shea. Um, this is in the residential B zoning district of the city. Um, I, I again want to stress that this proposal upon completion will be owner occupied. Um, the applicant is seeking to replace the existing one family home and replace it with a three story, two family home, which again, I, will be owner occupied. The lot size is 5,292 square feet. Um, the home will also have four parking spots and each unit should be roughly between um, 1,300 square feet. Um, I'm going to turn it over to our architect, David Rose, um, just to talk a little bit more about the project. And then uh, oh, we're going to open it up to some questions um, and concerns. Sure. Uh, obviously, I know everyone's on hand. All right, there you go. And uh, Jonathan, you're going to let him in? He's all set. Okay. Yeah, I'm all set. <clears throat> Thank you, gentlemen. Um, I just want to share the uh, the screen so we can see the files, uh, if that's okay with everybody. Um, yep, go ahead. I think this should do it. Does everybody see that? No. Nope. Give it a second. There they are. There, there it is. is. There it is. All right. <laughs> that's that's the existing site plan. Uh, basically, it define you know showing what's there right now. It's a one story. Um, bungalow basically with a garage and a shed in the backyard and uh, this is uh, essentially the new fl uh, floor plan in the same orientation um, with this with uh, Shea Street to the right and um, the footprint of the building is is almost similar it's a little bit longer um, and slightly narrower the new building um, but we've improved all the setbacks, the front yard, the, the rear yard, and the side yard setbacks uh, have all been improved. Um, and it's basically, a, it's, if you look at, it, at the building from a side, it's really a kind of a duplex, a side-by-side -side duplex. But you don't see that because it's, you know, it's, it's facing the side yard, essentially, the entrances. 
all the parking is conforming. It's at the front. Um, the lot size is not conforming, but that's, that's the case right now as well. Um, I've done a lot of things to make it less impactful on the elevation using uh, local materials, um, contextual materials that you'll see in the, in the neighborhood as well. Um, I don't believe it's a, a, a massive building from, a, you know, from the, from the size standpoint. Um, it, it's really nothing uh, earth shattering about what we're trying to do. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's been in, neither my family or Jordan's family for almost 20 years now. So, and we're not planning to flip it or anything like that. It's, it's, uh, a long-term project and it's something that I've been thinking about doing for a long time. Um, the, I can show you a picture. I can pull it up here. That is, you know, not exactly what we're doing, but kind of a, a similar, um, material, uh, and shape building. Um, and I don't have any renderings of the building that I'm doing now because it's in a schematic stage. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's something that, you know, we're, we're willing to work with the, the city to develop something that is not going to be, you know, foreign or foreign looking. Um, Jordan, I'm not sure if you have anything to say to the, to the board. Uh, just want to introduce myself. Say hi, uh, Jordan Legal. Appreciate all of your time, um, and you know, we're hoping to make something that the, the neighborhood will be really excited about having and proud of. Um, and so, looking forward to the feedback, coming in with an open mind, and uh, really want to make sure everyone understands what, what we're intending to do. I know there's a little bit of miscommunication, so hopefully we can, we can clear that up and, and hear any uh, questions or concerns and, and have a chance to address it. Are you, are you uh, well, I'm reading things about third floor decks and, and I got letters here from eight people that say they're in opposition, so they're probably here to speak. Uh, I got roof decks on here, too. Yeah, there's, there's a roof deck. Um, it'll have a parapet wall, so you won't see any any evidence of it by looking at the building from the outside and again all our setbacks are better than what what the existing building has so we're yeah, doing as much the, as we can what's the total height of that um we I think we're we're in the neighborhood i don't know the the, the exact survey of the of the grade plane um, but my estimate is it'll be approximately 24, 28 feet to the parapet. 28 feet, okay. Yeah. And that's, to the, that's the height of the parapet as well. So again, the roof is set down behind that. Okay. Uh, any questions of the board? Uh, I have one question. Uh, this picture that I'm seeing right now, how come I don't have it in my plan? Yeah. It was sent afterwards. I'm, I'm not sure, Pat, if uh, the, the distribution was made to the board. Do you know, Pat? Which picture? The elevations. The elevations, yes, I sent them over um, what a week and a half ago. Anyone else on the board get them? I didn't get them, but let me, let me look here. They could be in the folder. Uh, she would have sent them over. Yeah, if she got them. That's what I'm saying. No, she, she's great about getting everything over there, but we definitely sent them over. Well, they're not, they're not that great because I don't have them. I don't have one either. We don't have I one. don't have one either. They're not here. And they're not in the folder. They're in an email somewhere. Yeah, she, re she requested them from us uh, almost two weeks ago. So yeah. I, put, I put them together and sent them over via Patrick. How did you send them? Email. All right, we're going to be coming back anyway, like we said. So 
let's right. let's hear what let's hear what the neighbor said. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? Let's get back. If we can cut that screen out. Thank yeah. you. Anyone want to speak in favor? Mr. Not Thomas? seeing any hands. Mr. Thomas. Uh, right here. Can you unmute yourself, Mr. Thomas? There you go. Can you hear me now? Is that Demma? Denna? Demma? I can't hear you. Are you unmuted? Did you unmute yourself? Yeah, she's unmuted. I'm not sure if your mic, you may need to turn your microphone or sit a little bit closer. No, it's, 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 I can hear you fine. I can't hear her. No, yeah. not you. I know. She may oh, not oh, have oh, a oh, microphone. Oh. She is unmuted, but it may not be working properly. All right. All right. Can you get close to it? Maybe your mic's not working. Oh, boy. All right. See if we can get that working. Is there anyone else want to speak in favor right now? First call? Not seeing any other hands. Second call. Is there anything from the DPW in here? Let me look. Yep. A lot of here from uh, all that part of the hearing close. We'll get back to I won't close it yet because Demo wants to speak. We've got to figure out what's wrong with her computer. But I have a letter here from the DPW. We have reviewed this middle of the above reference project, 49 Chase Street, KTMZV 2171, September 9, 2021. Number one, specify how much impervious the area will be increased due to the development. Two, provide plans showing the existing site conditions, layout of utility, grading, drainage, and the construction details. Three, explain how the surface runoff will be discharged and treated. Four, provide dimensions and grades for the paving area of all driveway entrances. Five, Shea Street is proposed to be repaved in 21-22. There's a five-year moratorium for digging a new paved streets. And that's from the DPW. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? Why don't we uh, hear from them and then we'll get back to, maybe she's got to re, re put in a reconnect. Yeah, she might've logged out. We'll see if she'll get back in. We do have a hands up with Nat Whale. Nat? Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yep. You're an attorney? I am not an attorney. Could you take an oath, please, Ms. Chris? Sure thing. May I tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you, Dad? I will. Thank you. Not just this. All right. Um, my name is Nat Wales. I live, I own the property at 78 Baxter Ave, which is uh, in a direct butter to this project. Um, and in fact, is it okay if I share my screen? Um, to, to explain what I'm going to, I think it helps to be able to show um, the, the actual, uh, I have some visuals I'd like to show. Is that okay? I, I mean, what, what do you want to show? I'd what like to show the uh, site plan uh, in combination with uh, my property. I think that the plan that they show just shows it on their lot. It doesn't show it in context of the buildings around it and how directly it would affect my house at 78 Baxter Ave. Well, I mean, yeah, go I'll ahead. I'll be quick. Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. Quick, I appreciate though, it. Please. All right. So this, what you're looking at here is, uh, can you see my cursor? Yeah. Yes. This is, this is their uh, plans combined with a survey that I had done on this property. Yeah. And you'll see that the existing structure at 78, this is the house that I own, is, yeah. very, is very close to the property line here. Yeah. And so when they talk about uh, the setbacks not being any better, I, I beg to differ. I think they're pretty horrible for the uh, living conditions at this house, especially this uh, back deck and this rear setback. Um, so I'd like to go through just each of the setbacks that, that they're requesting and, and to explain how those affect me as a property owner and yeah. how, I, how they affect the neighborhood. Sure. Okay, so first of all, they're seeking uh, effectively a zero setback on the side property line. I know that I think they said 14, but with this deck at 4.5 feet, this is effectively right up against the property line. This house here um, is basically at grade. And so the, the level of this deck is in line with the levels of the windows on this side of the house for the kitchen and the living room. So there's obviously some um, 
and an upstairs bedroom as well. And so there's obviously some privacy concerns here, having people having parties on the back deck, uh, even just a normal phone conversation, it's right outside of our window. Imagine your house with your kitchen and just having a deck, like a mere few feet outside of your window at the same window height. Uh, noise, obviously, is a huge issue too. Um, sorry, I, I talked about privacy in terms of, the, now there's gonna be people above our window view looking down into our house. And we're gonna be looking up at the deck. Uh, noise, I've covered. Um, space, already this is blocking out a lot of light. Um, even just a simple umbrella or a grill or something on this deck is going to obstruct our air views and our airspace. Drainage. Uh, these decks, uh, if they're draining water into our foundation, we already have issues keeping uh, the basement dry. And uh, so now that could exacerbate that through rain or shoveling snow off the deck. So that's just the side setback in terms of the deck. The rear setback, they're seeking a variance. Uh, original. It's supposed to be 25 feet. They're seeking a 14 foot, I believe that says four inch variance on the back. Um, this really has the effect of making our house feel boxed in. Um, the house would look directly out at a massive structure, uh, only 14 feet away, and uh, already th three stories tall and uh, with a roof deck on top of it. Uh, it's generally blocking a lot of airspace and light. Currently, we have a view right here of uh, distance views of the sky, trees, and open yard. Privacy also, the roof deck is going to be, there's going to be people up there and they're going to be looking down in at our property. Um, I believe this has a, a, a huge impact on the on the uh, livability, uh, standard of quality of living in this property, and and the value of the property. Uh, bulk size, they're looking for a 75%. Um, they're looking for a 75% um, increase into the floor to lot ratio. The required requirement is a 40%. So they're nearly doubling the standard bulk size of this lot. Um, and it's just too small and too close to other non-conforming buildings. It's not a good site for a building this big. Uh, it's perhaps not a good choice for a multifamily house. All right. um, and, and, and really we'd be left with only two windows on the south side of our house, mm -hmm. on this side of the house, without a direct view of an immediate adjacent structure. All, all of our windows right now are currently looking out at other structures and we just block out light uh, significantly. In terms of the neighborhood, I'd like to get into that too, because obviously this affects me significantly as a direct abutter, but I think there's uh, reasons why this is not good for the neighborhood as well. Right, um, you're taking notes, right? Because I am. Um, I'd like to talk about parking. I'm sure some of the other neighbors might have uh, some, some problems with this too, but the plans show um, pretty tight parking. I'm not sure what size cars these are. I didn't get a chance to measure it, but just looking at it visually, it doesn't look like it's out there. Four, I apologize. Those, those were all full size cars. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Mr. Wales, full size. Thank you. Um, so we have we do have a, a, a telephone pole here and a tree here. But I, I, I apologize if I didn't notice them on the plans. But uh, with two units and three bedrooms and a roof deck, um, you can imagine there's going to be a lot of people coming and going uh, from this space and. Uh, this street is already very, very narrow, and there's been a lot of issues over time. Um, and so what's going to happen, I think we all understand, people are going to end up parking in the street. And that's a big issue uh, just for delivery trucks, uh, emergency vehicles. Um, I've already seen myself two accidents on this road already. Uh, so I think there's some uh, big concerns for parking uh, for the neighborhood that, that are very important. Um, and then I think more importantly is that this building just doesn't fit the neighborhood. You look around, we have large yards, pitched roofs, uh, a certain style of house in this neighborhood. And what they're proposing to build just doesn't fit the neighborhood at all. Uh, it's too dense, uh, the bulk size is too large. And I just worry about the precedent that it sets for other properties in the neighborhood. Um, if they're allowed to build a building that big here, I mean, what happens to every other uh, bungalow style house in the neighborhood? Um, and how's that gonna affect the neighborhood long-term? So those are my those are my objections. Um, any questions for me? No, thank you, Mr. Wales. Anyone else opposed or undecided? Uh, Gemma, are, you, are you are you in favor? Right? Would you go? 
She's still there. I'm just not sure. Go ahead and just just try doing a test one, two, three to see if your microphone is working. Uh, no. Um, Dean, I'm going to try to send you a phone number to call to log in. Maybe we can talk to you that way. I'm not sure what's going on with your microphone. Sure. Well, I just heard her a little bit. Say that again. Go ahead. One more time. Speaking we just heard close, you a little bit. Loud. Get a little bit closer. We definitely heard you. No, so. Oh, okay, I'll send you a phone number. Right. Give me Anyone a few seconds. Else? I'm going to send that in the chat, Dina, and then we'll go to Laura Moy. Miss Moy. Hi, I'm Laura Moy. Like? Yeah, uh, Mr. Cabez, could you swear in, please? Mike does. Uh, Mike, mute. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Who are we looking for? I okay, thought we were Mike, that, that we're fine. Mike's, we're fine. Mike's all set. Go ahead. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you guys? I do. Thank you. All right. You you, you have the floor, Ms. Moore. Thanks. Uh, I'm the owner of 41 Silver Street. Uh, it's a single family yeah. house uh, that I live in alone with my daughter. I'm a widow. Um, and my dog, my daughter's in the room. Uh, I'm relieved to hear that the current plans include for owner occupancy, but I'm concerned about the size of the building and the density of the parking spaces. That is not a big lot. We walk by it every day when we're walking our dog. Right. Um, it's a wonderful neighborhood. Um, I, and just because the current owners intend it to be owner occupied doesn't mean that that's what it would stay. So I think that I would agree with Mr. Wales, that the style of architecture is really out of place um, with the with what the houses here look like, and just generally, I think that the size of that building on the lot um, is a real concern to us. Okay. Anyone else like to speak? Opposed or undecided? The Fords. Jonathan Fords, right here. Sorry about that, Mr. Chairman. I have some issues on my end myself. Ken Stanford has his hand first, and then we'll come to the next person. I just okay. sent uh, the, the phone number as well to Dina. Okay. Where are we? Mr. Stanford, take an oath, please. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, I hope you died. I do. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ken Stanford. I live at 74 uh, Baxter Avenue. Uh, the owner of the house is the New England District Church of the Nazarene. Uh, and I am the district superintendent. So it's a house provided for my family and the work that I do. Um, I'm, my concern is, uh, once again, it's been expressed, is the lot is a very small lot. Mm -hmm. and, um, and also the privacy with the roof. Uh, patio and um, and the noise factor, but the precedent is what concerns me, I guess, probably the most, is that uh, once once uh, once one property is approved for this kind of a, a kind of a situation, I'm just concerned that um, others will be approved as well because uh, it was set a precedent, and that that's basically I just wanted to share that. Thank you, Mr. Stamp. <clears throat> Anyone else? Who's next, Tom and Jonathan? We have uh, Brenda Wang followed by G username Jim. Brenda, could you take an oath, please? Yes, I can. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. You have the floor, Brenda. Hi, thanks, everyone. Um, I just speak on behalf of my son, who is the owner of 80 Baxter Avenue. Yeah. And he he is traveling. So he sent a, he did send an email over uh, yeah. to, and then he asked me to to speak uh, rep, uh, for, for him. Uh, forgive my English, sorry. So okay. I, um, I, I uh, moved down here just to, you know, uh, with my son and, uh, I really, really enjoy the neighborhood. 
you know, it's a it's a really prestigious place. All the birds are singing such a harmony place, and people are so nice, you know, walking the dog so close yep. to the beach. And we all enjoy this neighborhood. Every single one of us we talk, we all enjoy so much. And then mm -hmm. I, you know, we we you see if 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 we we're not opposed building something. Uh, you know, uh, fit or in how many right. of the of the of the already um, very pretty uh, homeland or, or or home. Um, it's just like when you're looking at the the picture and everything. It's just I I, I mean I, I will have someone right right at my <laughs> right at my fence, and then there's just such a huge building that looks very different from every other houses. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know the building called everything, but it just like looks very different. Um, that's my uh, opinion. Thank you for Thank it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Next. Our username, Jamie. Jamie, can you take an old place and unmute yourself? Unmute yourself. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing about the truth, so I hope you got I do. You're Thank up, you. Jamie. Hi, everyone. I'm fairly new to the neighborhood. Uh, hey, we just moved I in. just need a name and address for the- Oh, for sure, the, for the yeah. Uh, my name is Jamie Stone. I am a resident at 53 Silver Street. Uh, I'm here with my family, the, the Kellys. Um, we're a two-family unit up and in, up in below. Um, so we would be adjacent to this property that's going in. And okay. I just kind of wanted to uh, agree with a lot of the statements that have already been said today. We all yep. moved in from South Boston uh, very recently. And a huge problem that we were moving away from when we were there was roof decks and more modernized structures. Um, the roof deck situation there got so bad and so loud that they're actually denying new roof decks in that area. Mm -hmm. um, so I am quite concerned with that here because we finally moved to a neighborhood that, that's very close knit, it seems, and very quiet and very peaceful. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we love about it here so far. Um, so this was a little bit of an alarm to us. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, that's my main concern is, is noise and privacy. And the structure does kind of interrupt the, the very like quiet, nice uh, feeling that this neighborhood already has. Thank you very much for your time. Next. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I believe we have Dina on the phone now. Uh, I believe it's your 617-773-3218. I'll unmute her. Okay. And can you take an oath, please? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth will help you, God. I do. Thank you. you name, and address, name and address, Ms. Thomas. 58 J Street. 58 J, okay. Uh, I would be against the building just because I think um, the lot is too small for that size of a house. And most of the homes in this neighborhood are 100 year old homes. And I really just don't think that the structure fits in. And also a packing problem, I believe. And I did send an email over earlier last week. Mm -hmm. Dina, can we have you just turn down the volume on your computer? Sure. Okay, that helps. There you go. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I just was in opposition to the structure just because of the size of it on that lot and that most of the homes in this neighborhood are like 100-year-old homes and I don't believe that structure fits in with the neighborhood and I'm also concerned about parking, street parking. Uh, it's not that Pardon me? No, go ahead. You, you just keep going in and out because of because your computer's on, I guess. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But that was 
Devil Someone Devil else has something on here too. <laughs> something. Uh, Marty, it's, it is feedback from her end because of the. Yeah, it is. All right. Ms. Thomas, I put you down as a proposed and the reasons why. So we, we did get it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, anyone else? We have Citizen Rotafeld, then followed by Debbie Ford. All right, Citizen Rotafeld. I do want to get in John Rotafeld, 62 Grand Wall Road. Um, from lo looking at the pictures, having the parking four spaces in the front of the yard, that doesn't make any sense because visitors they won't be able to park in front of their house, not to mention Shea Street is extremely narrow. You can't park on both sides of the road. So it, the design to me, I really don't understand at all how you could approve this design. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, the roof decks, this is, this ask makes no sense at all. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm again, I'm, I'm kind of Mr. That first guy that showed all those pictures, I think his name was Mr. Welsh or something. Yes. That was a great presentation. Thank well, you very much. I, I wish you would come to more meetings. I, I love that presentation. Um, they're taking a, a, there is a driveway there in that house right now. So they're basically taking away parking and they're going to make the parking situation worse with the roof decks there uh, this just makes absolutely no, no sense please do not approve this project if Thank they want to build a two family there you know it is residential b and they could put a two family in there but they would have to put in a modest two family in there that would be more conforming to the neighborhood i mean this this doesn't fit in there at all and would definitely be you know, it would be a detriment to everyone when you when you when I'm looking at the street view right now of that picture, there's going to be like four cars that are going to be parked basically in the front yard. And that's, you know, and we don't want people parking in the front yards of houses. That's the whole point of good zoning. So um, I know you guys will do a good job and there's no way I know you guys would vote in favor of this one. Thank you. Thank you, John. Anyone else? We have Debbie Ford, and then I think maybe Dina might have fixed her volume problems. We'll go to Debbie Ford, followed by Dina. Debbie, Debbie, we have a letter. Go ahead. You're up. Take an oath, Deb, please. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, take oh, an oath. Hi. Are you ready? Are you woke? Well, yeah. You <laughs> promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you guys. We do. Thank you. Hi, we live at 68 Jackson and Out. My name is Debbie Ford. John Ford. John Ford. 68 what? 68 Baxter Ave. Okay, Baxter, yeah. And um, the building is, I hate to say it, it just doesn't fit in our neighborhood. We have lived here all our lives. Yep. And, the, and, the, and the lot is way too small for what they want to do. And the owner of 78 Baxter Ave did it perfectly because we can see his house from our yard. And right. just get in. Plus, Shea Street is so small and it's a cut through. So at five o'clock, the people are coming around that corner. They're supposed to stop at the stop sign, but they whip around that corner and fly down my, my street. So, right. I mean, I'm just opposed to it altogether. And something as big as that. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. I'm on opposition to it. Okay. Um, I um, I don't like the design. First of all, I'd like to see colored pictures from different colored artists uh, drawing of it to maybe look at the different colors. But as far as that roof deck goes, I don't like the idea of the the stairwell access coming up. I mean, that to me is. Looks like in, in town Boston or New York or some place like that they have access like that. Or South Boston, I think, has some of them. Yeah. Uh, also, the uh, it's a flat roof. So yeah. um, they say they're putting the parapet around there. I think sound is going to be quite an echoing in the area, like Nate had mentioned. Um, I'm 100% behind what Nate had said. Yeah. Um, and my question is, AC, you know, with the air conditioning, 
with a with a home that size, where would those units be to uh, put the air conditioning in? Would they be roof AC units? No, they'd they probably be right no. beside the house. Ground mounted right beside the house. Okay, all right. Yeah. And uh, as far as the back to the traffic issue, those four vehicles, they're showing like an SUV type size vehicle in there. That's great, but come winter time, where's that snow going? When they plow that out or shovel it out, where is it going? When you see on that They don't have any sides, you know. You can see how narrow, how narrow that sidewalk is. Right. So right. anyway, we're definitely opposed to it. And uh, okay. I'd like to see something better in there. Nice two-family home or something. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Thank you. Anyone else? We have... Uh, we'll try and go back to Dina on the phone. And then I believe Kay Driscoll right after. Dina, you're on the phone. Go ahead. You gotta unmute your phone there, Dean. Unmute your phone. The phone. Your phone. The thing in your hand. You grab your phone. Put the you gotta unmute it. It's on I mute. Just, I just sent her the You all set now? All right. Oh, we'll yeah. come back to her. We'll go K Dristol and then we'll come back to Dean. Kay Driscoll, take an oath, please. You got to unmute yourself. Yes. Hi, do you uh, swear to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank Name you. Name an address for the record, please. Kathleen Driscoll, 41 Shea Street, next to the property. Kathleen, totally opposed. You have the floor. Go ahead. Totally opposed to this. Um, develop the property, put in a, an appropriate size. Even a two family, uh, nothing like the ridiculous edifice that has been shown tonight. It's just way out of line in the neighborhood. Mr. Wales put on a terrific um, display with his, his schematics and all his information. I totally agree with him. This does not belong in this neighborhood. Um, my mother still lives in that house. She's been there for over 65 years. Yep. And um, very concerned about the property line, how it's going to about her property on that side, the runoff, um, the parking, and the noise. So totally opposed to it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time tonight. Uh, anyone else? Can we get a hold of Dana? Dana, I get your testimony that you're fully opposed to this. Uh, so I have everything I need. I know you can't get on the phone here. We can't hear you. Something happened to the computer, and now your phone's feedback. But I did get your testimony, and it's all written down, and it's all recorded. So if you can speak one more time, we can try. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, her phone can you is hear not. Us? I can't hear you. No. You got to unmute your phone, not your not your computer. The foam has to be unmuted. I'm not sure if the request isn't going through or what, but it's not unmuting it. Your phone's been muted. You gotta unmute your phone. Not the computer, your phone. The thing you're holding, the phone, you gotta unmute it. We mute it for you. All right, we gotta we gotta continue. This is this is Try star six, Dina. Oh. And then we'll go to Drew Didrickson. And then we did have a chat that was saying that the people were not aware of this, Mr. Chairman. You got what? Oh, I had to say something, so I said it. Why? Is that a big deal? Hey, I got to mute her. There you go. All right. Uh, who are we on now? Drew Didrickson. Drew, can you unmute yourself? Good evening, everyone. Thanks Hold for on. Take an oath, please. You swear to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Thank You're you. Up. So I'm a tenant at 78 Baxter Avenue in Quincy, um, yep. right on the property border with this new development plan, and I am 100% opposed. Um, yep. The noise and the property um, 
well, really the noise is a big concern of ours and we are renters uh, through Nathaniel Wales and the deck proposal would be right outside our kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, my partner, Sophie, works from home full time and construction in her you know, office setting would totally disrupt her career as well. Um, we're really concerned about the privacy. I think the lack of fitting in with the neighborhood is also a concern. Uh, I've been a Quincy resident for just about one year and really loved the experience. Part of the reason I moved to the neighborhood was to be in a more quiet area. I uh, was living in New York City before that and Quincy you know, has been a great neighborhood and I just don't think the building would fit in. So thank you for your time, everyone. Thank you. Last call. Council, I want you to speak, please. Council, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I won't take up too much of, uh, of the rest of our time here. I know uh, the neighbors have been uh, vocal in expressing their concerns uh, to the board, to myself, and of course, uh, tonight, whether it be through uh, emails or phone calls there. Uh, just effectively, I wanted to echo some of the sentiments that were uh, brought forward tonight, yep. mainly, um, you know, I don't really think that this proposal as is fits in with the character of the neighborhood. Right. And I do have some concerns, uh, mainly around the, the roof deck proposal. Um, I think as someone had pointed out earlier, this isn't South Boston uh, in a downtown. This is a residential neighborhood with a lot of families. And I think that in particular is something that um, they may need to work on uh, if they'd like to come back another month or two uh, with maybe a new proposal. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, I appreciate your time and I appreciate uh, all the neighbors that have uh, you know, come before us tonight. And uh, thank you very much. And thank you for your time, Council. Thanks for hanging in. All right. We'll call that part of the hearing closed. Uh, let's speak to Mr. Foley. Mr. Foley, you were there? Yes, Mr. Chair. Right there. So do you want to... Come back with a different proposal and, and and try to do something for the neighbors that 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 can be done. Yes, sir. All right. So, when do you say October twenty sixth? Does that work for you, Mr. Chair? Yep. Okay. Is that enough time? Uh, David, does that give you plenty of time? Yeah, that's plenty of time. Meet, meet with the neighbors. Yep. Kind of get their concerns. Walk around. You get the addresses right there. They're right in right right in that thing. And, Maybe we could show them something before we come back next time. Okay, Mr. Chair. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Cabayas, do we have a motion to move this to October 26th, please? Mr. Chairman, man number 21-71, and attorney Patrick Foley for variances to demolish the existing single family home and build a new two family townhouse style home on the premises number 49 Shea Street and make a motion to continue the hearing to October 26th. Second. On the motion, CNN, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Further on to tonight's agenda. ZBA 2172, Christopher Chenette for variance to add a full second story addition to the current building footprint with the little front left corner addition on the premise number 60 Macy Street. Is the applicant their representative here? Yes, sir. Chris, uh, is that the Deedian's old house? It is. It is. That's what I thought it was. Okay. I'm saying, geez, I haven't heard that name in a long time. And I just I wrote by it. I go, oh, that's a Deedian's house. Why don't you tell us what you, why don't you take an oath first from uh, Mr. Cabayas? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not about the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Chris, why don't you tell the guys what you want to do? Sure. So good evening. Thank you. Um, so give you a brief synopsis. I'm looking to demolish my current second floor and reconstruct a new second floor mm -hmm. over the current first floor, first floor footprint, right. plus an additional five foot by six foot front corner, left corner, like you, like you said. Yeah, it, had a, it has a little jog on the front porch there, correct? It does. Yeah. yeah. So we would fill that jog in. And so you're going to square the whole thing right off. Correct. All right. And then you got a deck in the back you're putting in. Existing deck, and it would be the existing size, a new deck with the existing footprint of the current one, yes. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, geez, we used to play basketball in that guy. <laughs> 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 How many hundreds of years ago, right? 
You don't have to tell me. Counselor, you've been here all night. Why don't you go so you can go do your business? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. No, I'm in full support of Mr. Chenette. Um, I only knew the Deedians when they lived on, on C Street, you know, so you're, you're, you're an older guy. Um, but uh, no, Chris and I uh, chatted a little bit. He talked about the footprint. Um, I also had chatted with Mr. Duca uh, early on before uh, Chris was about to launch uh, the zoning paperwork, but we went ahead and uh, I think it's great. He uh, grow the family and, uh, and stay in the neck is all uh, good. Chenette's, uh usually do. Here go. <laughs> Any questions of the board, Mr. Bass? I have no questions. Mr. O'Brien? No, no questions. Okay. Mr. Chin? Mr. Chin, any questions? Uh, the shed showing on your plan, that's gone now, right? Or is that still there? Shed is still there. That won't be touched. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Himmel? No questions, buddy. No questions. Okay. Is there anyone that would like to speak in favor? Anyone want to speak in favor? First call. Citizen, Ro Citizen Rotafeld. Citizen Rotafeld, you're up. Yeah, I'll be quick. John Rotafeld, 62 Grand Road. I doubt tonight. that. <laughs> well, I'm going to slow down now. All right, come on, John. Um, but no, I'm, I'm in favor of this. And, you know, just, just to let you guys know, um, at the redistrict, you know, they redistrict Quincy today. So yeah. there's a possibility that House Neck might even be part of Weymouth when we wake up tomorrow. So we're not <laughs> sure exactly. Okay. So the map was so small, I couldn't tell exactly, you know, what was going on. They said they're going to post it online soon. So we'll all find out. But I'll tell you what, they approved it. So the new redistricting, we, we have been redistricted. Um, Thank you, John. But um, I, I, I'm in favor of this. The Chenettes are a great family in Quincy, yeah. and um, I'm, I'm for it. Thank you. Is there anyone else want to speak in favor? Second call? No Third. further hand. All our part of the hearing closed. I got a letter here from DPW, September 10th, 2021, 60 May Street, case number ZBA 2172. We reviewed above reference project and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? First call. Second call. No hands. Third call closed. Yeah, uh, that's going to be nice. I'm glad you're doing that over, John. Uh, Sean. Yeah, Chris. That's going to be, uh, uh, there's so many of you. I mean, I got. <laughs> no. Right. Uh, and then you got across the street, and Grandpa's house was on the left, right? Yeah, to the right of me. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's funny. That is something. Uh, no, I'll be voting in favor. I think you're doing a good job, and it's it's going to be a beautiful house when you're done. You got a good buy when you bought that. Yes, sure. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Grace? I'm in favor. Mr. O'Brien? Uh, in favor. It works for the neighborhood. Yeah. Mr. Chin? Yes, I am in favor. And Mr. Hamill? In favor. Nice project, and it works for the neighborhood. Could I uh, have a motion, please, Mr. Bass? Yes, Mr. Chairman. In matter number 21-72, Chris was shut up for a variance and a full second story addition to the current building footprint. The additional front left quarter addition on the premises number 60 Macy Street. I make a motion to grant the variance. Second. Uh, Madam Clerk's not here. Mr. Duca, could I get a roll call, please? Michael Bass? Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Oh, yeah. Russell Chen? Yes, in favor. John Himmel? Yes. Marty Akins? Yes. Passes 5 0. Chris, enjoy the property. Thank you. All right. We'll see you later. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Can yeah, I make a motion to adjourn? Second. Uh, All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Gentlemen, thank you very much. Ladies, have a good night. Thanks good night, for hanging out. It was a long night for everybody. Thank, thank you. Thank you.